Okay, so we're all ready to get started on the weaving. Uh, I have already warped and the warping instructions will be in your pattern. The link for that should be below. Um, if you need a little extra help with warping, if you're not quite up with that yet, I do have a class available for purchase, Warping with Beginners. I will also put the link for that underneath. So I have separated my warp as well using my warp separators. You can use waste yarn or whatever works for you if you don't want to use warp separators or if you don't have them. So I'm starting with my cream colour and I'm starting in the upshared, bringing the shuttle in the right hand side, which is my personal preference. I'm going to leave a tail and let's just have a look at this tail. Yeah, I need mine to be a little bit longer than that. Approximately four times the width of the warp for hem stitching because we are going to hem stitch this table runner. Okay, that should be fine. Into the down shed for some plain weave. So, to start out with, just doing some simple plain weave before we get into working our border. We're going to have a border on each end. I'm a little bit cramped in this space, so hopefully I don't knock the camera or anything like that. And we're going to just continue doing plain weave in this cream colour or your lighter colour if you're using something else for three inches. Good idea to print out your pattern so that you have all the information with you or if you prefer to view it on a device or whatever, some sort of a screen. Um, but to have that information handy that goes along with the video so that you can use both of them as your learning tool. So I'll see you at three inches. Have my three inches all done. I'm going to cut the end, leaving a little tail of a couple of inches. And I'm just going to tuck that in a couple of warp threads. And it's going to sit there. Now we're going to bring in our blue. In the same shed, leaving a little tail as well. Not a huge tail, just a couple of inches. Beat that chain sheds and we'll tuck that tail into that shed. And we'll bring that back through. So two rows of the blue. Okay, so we can just go into neutral now. I can also cut that blue thread, leaving a tail of a couple of inches. Next shed will be up shed, so I'm going to tuck into that shed. And then we'll go into neutral, and we are going to take this opportunity to do our hem stitch before we get too before we wind too far forward. I do have a YouTube video on hem stitching if you need a bit of extra help with that. But if you're okay to go, then I'll just give this overview. So I'm starting with like a half hitch knot there just on the edge thread. To secure it. And as your pattern notes will say, I am stitching four, two, three, four, four across and one deep, which will bring me up here. Okay. 
Okay, one, two, three, four across, one deep. My other hand stitch tutorial is quite a bit more in depth than this. We're going to do that hem stitch right across to the other side. I don't think you need to watch me do the whole thing. Once you um, understand the basics, you should be fine with that. And just secure it on the opposite side with that same half hitch knot. With the hem stitch all finished, I'm going to come back in with my cream colour. And this is starting a new thread, so I'm going to leave my tail again for tucking in. And we're just going to do two picks of that before we commence the pickup sequence. Into neutral. We're going to pick up in front of the heddle. And the heddle is in neutral, so we're picking up on a closed shed. Now the first thing we want to do is go underneath the border. We're not going to be using the border, we want to keep that separate. So it's not part of the design. And then we're going to want to count 12 warp threads. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Come up and go over 2 warp threads. Now for the next one we're going to count 15. It's only for the first one that you count 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15. And then we're going over 2 again. And from there we're counting 15 again. And going over 2. Let's check that I counted that properly. 2, Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Yeah, over two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, and over two, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. And over two, and again two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, over two, and then we won't have enough to count out anymore, so we're just going to leave the stick under like so. Now we can place the pickup stick on edge, and that creates a little shed for us underneath. And we can bring in our first pattern yarn. I'm going to bring mine in at the back where the first warp thread that's going down, that's being pressed down by the stick, is. You can put this yarn on a little shuttle if you wanted to. Okay, I'm going to leave a bit of a tail hanging out the back, not too long. And there's our first pattern pick. So now that we've done that, we can remove the stick. And beat the pattern pick down. Then we can go into our next shed and follow up with a plain weave of 
cream color. Back into neutral for our next pattern pick. Ready for our next pattern row now. So going under the border once again, this time we're going to pick up, well we're going to go underneath 11, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. We can come up through there and we're going to go over four warp threads. Now we're going to pick up, sorry, we're going to go under 13, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13. Coming up again and going over the four warp threads again. And we'll keep doing this until we have covered all of our pattern row there. Okay, so we're going to turn that stick on edge, come back in with our pattern yarn just to the edge of where you're actually making the pattern. You are going to have floats on the back, fairly long ones, and for that reason make sure when you're bringing your pattern work through you're not pulling tight on it, that you're not making a really tight tension because otherwise once it comes off the loom it's going to pucker where you've put your pattern. Alright, let's take that stick out again. We can beat that in and we can bring through our background cream colour once again. Always following up with the background yarn because we need it to hold this in place and to give this integrity. Okay, next row for our pattern. So we're back in neutral and ready to pick up the next row. Uh, 